Continuing with 5.2, we'll look at potential energy. And you know potential energy as stored energy. And from this stored energy, we have different forms of potential energy. First will be gravitational potential energy, and then followed by elastic potential energy. So gravitational potential energy is energy associated with an object due to the object's position relative to a gravitational source. So here's your definition here, and as our owl says, gravitational potential energy depends on mass and height. So looking at that, that's exactly what we're going to write right here. It depends on mass, going to be measured in kilograms, and your height which needs to be in meters because of what your units for GPE are going to be. So your equation is GPE equals MGH, whereas your GPE is going to be measured in joules, your mass is in kilograms, this is your constant 9.81 meters per second squared, and this is going to be measured in meters, your height. Making sure that it's either positive or negative, okay? Make sure that you assess the direction with it. So now we have the elastic potential energy, and this is defined as energy stored in any compressed or stretched object. Energy stored in any compressed or stretched object. And it's going to depend on distance. Being a little bit more specific, it's a distance stretched or it's the distance that it was compressed. It being a spring, a string, a wire, something that is compressible. Moving right along. The equation for um, your elastic potential energy is EPE equals one half Kx squared. Whereas EPE is your energy, which will be measured in joules, your K is called your spring constant, and your spring constant is going to be measured in newtons per meter, and then your X is your distance, although it is a displacement, which will be measured in meters. It has to be measured in meters in order for you to be able to talk about the joules. Definition for relaxed length, is length of a spring when no external forces are acting on it. So, in other words, if we would take this guy, make him slightly smaller, rotate him this way, and some of you have back, been back in my lab and have seen this that we have constructed for you. This spring is on a physics stand, and you're going to be able to pull it down with some mass on it. That length right there is called your relaxed length, okay? Your length when you put some mass onto it. And then you're going to pull down even further and let go, and it's going to do this number. Okay, it's going to oscillate back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So that would be your relaxed length and also your spring constant. Spring constant, more specifically, is defined as, and all we really want you to know right here is, if you have a small k value, that means that you're going to have a very stiff spring. It's going to take a lot of force to try to pull those coils apart. Whereas if you have, <laughs> actually, I just wrote that backwards. If you have a small k value, you're going to have a very loose spring. It's not going to take a lot of force. Whereas if you have a large k value, it's going to be a very stiff spring in which you 
would have to assess a lot of force to it. It's a lowercase k, and on figure eight on page 170, it's going to show you some values for that. Something else that I'd like you to put on this slide as well is the units. The units for k are newton per meter, a newton per meter. Also, something else that you need to remember is that k is considered a constant. So no two sig figs. And you know what I mean by that, right? When you're trying to assess this answer, you're not going to apply the number of sig figs based off of the spring constant. Now I do need to make this question a little bit smaller so I can fit all this work on here. What this question is saying is a stunt man is attached to a bungee cord with an unstretched length of 15.0 meters and he's going to jump off a bridge at 50.0 meters. When he finally stops, the cord has stretched a length of 44.0 meters. The stunt man has a point mass, so disregard the weight of the bungee cord and assume the spring constant of the bungee cord is 71.8 newtons per meter. So what is the total potential energy relative to the water and the man before he stops? So first thing that you want to do is understand that, well, your given is an unknown, but after that is that your PE total. For your PE total, you want to assess your GPE and your EPE, whereas your GPE is going to be MGH and your EPE is 1 half KX squared. So let's just do a GPE first. So for our GPE, our mass is 70.0, your G is 9.81, and your height is a grand total of 6.0. I want you guys to look at that problem there and figure out where 6.0 came from, okay? That's why I'm not really doing the givens and unknowns on this one. Stop and think. I don't want you to just copy it down. So where did 6.0 come from? So height equaling 6.0 meters. How? Okay. So with that in mind, that's going to give you a final answer of 4120.2, which really gives you 4120 joules. So that's your GPE portion of this. Your EPE portion of this is going to be uh, 1 half kx squared. So that's 1 half 71.8. And your x comes out to be 29.0 squared. So your next question is 29.0 meters. How? Okay, figure that out, please. So putting this into your calculator, this is going to give you 31919, which comes out to be 30,200 joules. So now you simply just want to add the two together. So 4120 plus 30,200 is going to equal 34320, which gives you a final answer, a PE total of 3.43 times 10 to the fourth joules. Okay, so now work on your um, practice D problems and we'll move on to conservation. Move on to conservation.